Well, hey there. I'm going to continue with my Medicine from the Woods series. In the first one, we talked about analgesics and how you can, from the woods, obtain for yourself an aspirin type uh, remedy. Now, this episode, we're going to talk about an antibiotic that you can obtain from a woodland setting. And not only a woodland setting, you can find it growing in the suburbs, in the urban areas. It grows everywhere. It grows all around the world. So stay with me and let's look at something. There's a, an important disclaimer that I need to make right here at the beginning of this video. And that disclaimer is that I am not a doctor. Don't pretend to be one. I don't have a medical degree. I've never been to a pharmaceutical school. There's a lot of things that I'm not, but there's some basic knowledge, some basic information that is available to all of us if we will simply invest ourselves in learning and that's what this is about it's about learning and so i've made that important disclaimer and what i want to say is in regard especially in regard to uh, wild medicinals and also in regard to wild edibles things that you can go out and and pick and eat without them harming you. Do your research. Do your own research. Don't take my word for this. Get in the, get in the library. Google it. Study it. Learn about it. Do your own research. Put in your own dirt time. Don't be an armchair expert on bushcraft. Don't be an armchair expert on wild edibles or wild medicinals when you've never been in the woods picking the stuff or processing the stuff. So having said that, let's talk about usnea. Usnea. That's a odd word. It's a interesting it's an interesting growth somewhere between a, I, I, it's just in a world all its own. It's, a, it's kind of a complex little plant that grows on trees. And like I said in my introduction to this video, it grows around the world. There's several different varieties, several different types of it, but you can find it around the world. Any country you go to, any state you go to, every state that I've been in since I learned about this stuff, five states, uh, I have found it on the ground waiting to be picked up. Uh, Virginia, South Carolina, Kentucky, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. It's, it's here. And it's even in the northern states. It's in every state. You just have to find it. Now, that's what it looks like growing on the growing on the trees. I don't like to pick it off of the tree. I like to walk around and find it on the ground where after a storm, after a big wind where the where the wind is knocked it out of the trees because this stuff is a very slow growing uh, it's a very slow growing thing and it takes it a long time to develop to grow into maturity and one of the things that I want to say about it here at, at the beginning is that some of the information that you read about Usnea says that it resembles Spanish moss well if you live in the deep south and you know what Spanish moss looks like growing uh, 
from the from the oak trees, especially the live oak trees, uh, there's no mistaking usnea for Spanish moss. So research that and and learn something on your own. Do your do your dirt time. Do your research time. But if you if there's a question about whether or not it's uh, usnea or Spanish moss, if you break it, pull it apart. Usnea has a white core. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe it'll focus. Usnea has a white core in the center of the plant. And uh, that's that's one of the telltale signs and the blossoms. It's just a, once, you've, once you've seen it, and virtually all of us that spend any time in the woods have seen this and just didn't know what it was. Now, what you do with it, and let me say this first, as an antibiotic, understand what gram positive is. Study up on that. Find out what gram positive is. And then think about the usnea and the antibiotic, the, the, the medicinal properties in usnea treat infections that are caused by something that is gram positive. And that has to do with the, the way the cell walls of that bacteria are uh, the way they're, they're made. So you use usnea as a tincture. Now, to tincture usnea, we pack it fairly tightly into a quart-sized mason jar and then pour it full of Everclear. You can use vodka. We, we use Everclear to tincture with because there's some things that uh, just work better with Everclear than they do with vodka. You shake it around every now and then and set it up set it out of the way and leave it for six to eight weeks or longer. Longer doesn't hurt. Shorter does. Shorter will not extract everything that you need, but longer does. So, you know, at least six to eight weeks. And then pour the contents or pour the, the, the alcohol, pour the tinctured product off into uh, dark bottles something that the light doesn't penetrate, label it, and this will last for a long time sitting on the shelf. How long, I don't know, but a long time. And uh, the main thing is use a dark colored bottle. Now, if you think you might be tempted to just drink this as a, <laughs> as something to get intoxicated, yeah, forget that. Uh, the Everclear itself is some really, really awful stuff. But then by the time it's done tincturing and it takes on the flavor qualities of the usnea, uh, it's, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough, but it works. And not only do you tincture it to use it internally, but you can also use the, the plant itself, clean it up, soak it in water, soften it up, and you can use that as a poultice on top of a wound. Uh, pretty good stuff. It draws poisons out. It does... Uh, you know, it treats infections. It's just a, a just a really good plant growing in the woods. So, what have we got coming up here at David Crawlick Outdoors? Next week, 
next week is Holy Week. And Shirley and I will be uh, very involved at our the church that we're uh, uh, we're members of, uh, St. Robert's, uh, St. Robert Bellarmine uh, Catholic Church in Atmore, Alabama. And we're very involved there. And so next week, the likelihood of me doing anything outdoors, uh, channel-wise, now don't look for anything after this video is uploaded, at least not next week. Uh, the following week now, uh, Shirley and I are taking ourselves, we're loading up our, uh, we call it our Toyota carry-all. We're loading up the Toyota with our camping gear and we're going to the Geneva State Forest uh, outside of Geneva, Alabama to meet up with a bunch of folks uh, at the Southern Woodsman Rendezvous. Blackie Thomas is hosting the Southern Woodsman Rendezvous. I believe this is the second annual uh, rendezvous that, that Blackie's hosted, and we're looking forward to that. I had the pleasure of meeting Blackie Thomas up on Duggar Mountain back in the fall, and uh, I've known Blackie for years on Facebook, but never had the chance to meet him, and, and had that opportunity last fall. It was, it was great. It was great being there on Duggar Mountain, not only with Blackie, but with the uh, a bunch of the guys from the uh, Southeast Bushcraft Base Camp, and uh, just a great bunch of people, and uh, a bunch of the Southeast uh, Bushcraft Base Camp folks are coming down to Geneva State Forest to camp this coming weekend. Uh, not this coming weekend, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, they're planning to make it down to Blackie's Rendezvous and a bunch of people that Blackie knows uh, that follow Blackie's channel, uh, they're going to be there and it's going to be a great weekend and I've got some other things planned later on. I'm going to do some canoe tripping, uh, some, some short canoe trips, uh, explore some of the creeks and bayous and swamps that we've got here close to the cabin on Huckleberry Hill. So stay tuned for all of that, uh, look for that coming up. and. Folks, I want to express my appreciation to you for subscribing and commenting and liking the videos that we're putting up here on David Crawlick Outdoors. That means a lot to us, and we really do appreciate it. I want to thank you for subscribing. I want to thank you for uh, supporting the channel the way you do. We look forward to doing a lot more. And here, just the last couple of days, I have uh, begun to organize the videos that we've already got posted, already got uploaded, beginning to organize them into playlists, something that uh, I didn't think about doing until we got so many videos on the channel that I, I was getting bogged down. I was getting kind of lost. I, couldn't remember what have I done and what have I not done? What do I need to talk about? What, do I, what kind of videos do I need to make? And by having these playlists, you can, you can watch an entire list or you can click on a list and see something sort of in a topical format. And it also gives me an idea of where I need to go next in doing, especially where do I need to go next where uh, some of this educational stuff is concerned. And um, so, Appreciate you folks. I'll see you on the next one.